that's a little bit about me for those of you who don't know who I am. Okay, so uh, I want to make a quick disclaimer before we get started. All right, so the first thing I want to point out is that these, these are my observations and experiences. Okay, so I, I taught the license waiver course, you know, as a coach for 10 years. I've been operating my own school, the Cornering Confidence Program. And, you know, so I kind of had been having a foot in both worlds. And so that's sort of where I bring, that's how I, you know, I bring these experiences and my observations. Also, I 100% back the basic training license waiver courses. And I'll, pro I'll refer to basic training mostly in this presentation as the license waiver courses, because we know there's several different curriculums and I'm not going to name any curriculums. I'm going to make uh, uh, assumptions that you can, you know, they're, they're broad, but uh, specific as well to uh, certain ones that I've been trained in. Now, I'm not making a, a case against the basic courses. There's a lot they get right. They're really good at preparing riders with little to no experience. And basic training can take a rider very far. All right, so if you, if you wanna be a very conservative rider, you, you can go very, very far on basic skills and enjoy motorcycling just as much as someone who likes to go a little faster. I also have found that the cognitive skill development and traffic management is very hard to beat um, outside the waiver courses. I mean, they really um, can handle a lot of those mental things and, and how to interpret traffic probably better than anybody. And that's probably why you don't see a whole lot of additional training in traffic management and those kind of things. Now, why this topic? Well, you know, I'm interested in it, okay? So I, I have this inquisitive mind and, you know, in my experience, in, in my experience coaching track days and coaching tours, many experienced riders simply recite and perpetuate misconceptions perhaps learned in the waiver courses far into the future. They don't do it on purpose. Uh, it's just that they, there's a, a tendency to repeat for many years, what was taught in a basic course. Now, uh, the where I see problems are mostly with the next level cornering content and techniques beyond the parking lot. Because we know there, you know, there's a trick here. We have to teach people who don't know what they're doing not to hurt themselves today while we're learning. And then once they leave us, some things just aren't as applicable anymore. And so it's the next level cornering content and techniques that we're looking for. And um, they're, they're not being learned and potentially holding riders back once they leave the course. Also, uh, waiver course coaches may want to understand their students better because they may be bringing knowledge or questions to, you know, to their courses. And you got to understand in today's day and age, there's, you know, a lot of YouTubers and there's, there's a lot of great books out there, awesome podcasts. And they talk about things. And if you as a coach just stop, you know, with, with what's in the basic waiver courses and, and say, well, this is going to take you forever into the future, you just may not be understanding where, where the students are coming from. And of course, I want to make a quick note about advanced concepts in waiver course materials. You certainly can find inclusions of advanced techniques in waiver course materials. Now, when I was recertified in 2017 for the latest curriculum, there were many things in the, in the student handbook that were really advanced and, and improved. And I, I remember, remember being surprised by that. And the, the, the writer uh, coach prep uh, coach basically was saying, well, this might be the only class they ever take and that the book itself is kind of supposed to be a standalone resource. And while they do mention some of the advanced things I'll talk about in the, in the course materials, it's mostly in the workbooks, the student workbooks. When the students are actually out riding in the parking lot, these things are, are basically absent. So, so those are my just overall disclaimers ahead of time. Now, with the, uh, I have primary variations and secondary, secondary variations and we'll 
uh, we'll see you know, how far we can get with this because I really want to have more of a discussion than simply you know, just recite all this to you. And so I have four primary variations and then in between each one, we can maybe have a quick discussion or you know, questions or comments. And then if we get to the secondary variations, we can do that tonight. Now, somebody has to mute. Um, I, I hear sniffles and things like that. So if somebody could just check to make sure they're Microsoft, you know, remember if you wanna talk, great. Hold down that the uh, the space bar. Say what you need to. Okay, so the first, I'm going to read the four first, and then I'll, I'll take them one at a time. So the first one has to do with narrow narrow cornering focus. Now I'm not saying that there that there's not enough cornering materials or training in the in the in the waiver courses. I'm just saying that what is taught has a narrow focus. Okay. The front break, uh, front breaking technique, and more specifically the hand placement and and how to use the break. That that is a major variation. And then entry speed is another big one. So we're going to talk about entry speed. This is crucial, really, to what separates the parking lot waiver courses from from next. Let's say next step, next day training, whatever you want to do, and of course breaking and curves. All right, so we've all heard, you know, many, many times, never use your brakes in a turn. And we've said it many times as coaches, if you're, if your coach is out there. So, all right, so entry speed. I, I remember teaching the, the waiver course, and this was something that we just beat into their heads. Okay, this was a, a definition, you know, in the waiver course, I don't remember too many definitions that we really, really banged into their heads. This was one of them, okay, um, that basically a, a safe or good entry speed allows for maintaining or increasing your speed throughout the entire curve. I think uh, maybe it said something like you want to enter the curve at a speed where you can roll on steadily throughout the entire curve. And, and this is, I have five or six, maybe even 10 citations of this in the curriculum uh, where it's safe and good to be able to roll on from right when you tip in through the turn, okay? Now, we understand that when you do the waiver courses, they're built under the slower cornering constraints of a, park, of, a, of a parking lot. And so speeds are low. We can guarantee that they can only get up to like maybe third gear, you know, in, into these things. And so we're, we're, we have kind of a captive audience for this entry speed, okay? Now, what changes when you leave the basic rider course, or, you know, I, I mentioned that one, but I'm saying any waiver course, I don't want to, I'm not trying to, to harass anybody here, believe me, but we know this changes. Entry speed for experienced riders is generally faster. So if we add throttle as a rule, this is problematic. It's not safe. It's not good because if someone were to tip in at too fast a speed and roll on the throttle at the beginning and then through the entire turn, that that could lead us to um, a, a major issue, which has to do with uh, the the speed versus your your cornering arc. And I'm going to talk about that in a second. Now, also the the curriculum says all slowing must be completed before the entry point. Again, we'll talk about that in just a moment, but it basically says, listen, you have to slow so much when you, when, before you tip into this corner here in, in this waiver course, we want you to slow so much that you have to, for stability purposes, roll on that throttle, at least crack the throttle to maintain it, the speed, and then roll out because otherwise you will fall into the corner when you lean in. Right, but any fast, then we we don't want them to slow in the turn. So it's kind of you know we're we're trying to balance on the edge of a knife when we teach you know, a faster skill at, at lower speeds. So uh, you know what changes when you leave is we you know riders will slow in the first half of the curve. It is common, and you know I think if you you if you ask ten riders when do you transition from brake to throttle. And these are riders that would ride at a spirited pace, let's say, they would probably say, look, I, I, 
I transition from brake to throttle at the before I tip in. And in reality, they probably do not because they at least probably coast, okay, as they go in with maybe engine braking or closed throttle because we know that we can't increase our speed or we're going to cross that line. And so, so that brings me to the, the speed versus arc. So this is just an image that, you know, to understand what I'm talking about, with, about the speed difference between the waiver courses and what happens when you leave, especially if you ride at a faster pace. We, we want to keep in mind that the entry speed, it doesn't, it doesn't have to be one that allows for roll on from beginning to the end of a turn. That's a waiver course definition, all right? Entry speed is simply the, the, the speed that we enter the corner at. And it, it, it could be the opposite, okay? It could be a speed with which we want to continue slowing past the entry point of the turn, okay? Whereas a, a waiver course would say, we need to start rolling on there. Remember the key difference here is strength. So, so if you take a look here, we want to, so, so the first skill is we want to transition from brake to throttle. So I, I talk about that covering the brake, okay? So with the two fingers, so we can go brake to throttle transitions. So we, all, we, we would all pretty much agree, you're going to make brake to throttle transitions when you corner on a motorcycle. You can't ride it through a corner without going from one to the other. At some point, either beginning, in the beginning or in the middle, or even close to the end, if you're going, so if you're going uh, at a fast speed. So, if we go into our, uh, so, so it's when that transition takes place. So I'm going to try to use this laser pointer. You know, I, it's not really good probably through, uh, through Zoom, but it'll, it should work fine because I'll go nice and slow. So if you take a look here at the, the, you have a pink arc and a blue. And so I just picked the, the various miles per hour. 25 miles an hour versus 55 miles an hour. So let's just say that's the, that would be a, a good speed for this turn, right? So that would probably be like the perfect speed for this turn. Uh, and so we know that we can't, we can't really take the 25 mile an hour turn at 55 because that's going to put us out, you know, on, on a different arc. You can just take, take the beginning point of these lines and put them together as if they were, a, you know, a trajectory. And you would see that speed is the, is the major predictor in, in when we transition from brake to throttle, okay? So now uh, you want to typically transition from the brake to throttle at the slowest point in the turn, which I would say is your lowest miles per hour in the turn. So if you were looking at your, you know, a graph of your speed, when it dropped to the most point, you know, the lowest, that's probably the point where you're going to transition from brake to throttle, right? So if we're entering right here where the number 25 is, and I'm going, let's say 25 miles an hour, as soon as I tip into the turn, I'm going to need to to roll on that throttle to make this 180 degree curve, let's just say. The rider behind you is coming in at 50, right? So they they can't let off here. They, they have to, and I just picked 50 as a random number. If they were to let off the brakes here in transition, it would send them on the wider arc. And so they have to continue to slow until their slowest point and the motorcycles pointed in the direction they want to go before they make that transition. So where we are, where we differentiate between the waiver course and, and what happens in life after is that they're always pretty much going a speed in the waiver course that requires the brake throttle transition to happen at the beginning of the curve, if not immediately at tip in. All right. And so if, if we have, if, if they have their hand curled on the grip, okay, we never want to corner with our hand in a fist. Then as, as they release the brake vertically upright, they curl their hand on the grip, but now they're, they're left with just press in hope, okay, on getting through it. And so, so this, this is something that is really, you know, hard to argue, okay? It's, it's difficult to argue that you're going to make a hairpin turn at 60 miles an hour, Okay. It, it, logic even would say 
we have to slow to a suitable uh, speed for that. Now, where we where that happens, if we slow at the beginning of it or near the apex, we still have to slow for it to make that turn. All right. So this is I don't want to get too deeply into the content that I teach in Corner and Confidence because this isn't really a you know a presentation on that, but advanced training, even even the uh, the the uh, advanced courses that the waiver organizations uh, have, they will have these things in them too. So we know that I don't have something here that's rocket science. You're gonna you're gonna hear this in any advanced training, basically beyond the waiver courses. Okay, questions or comments? Yeah, John. Yeah, go ahead. I think when they do the waiver course. And they're, you're told to turn on the gas upon entry. That's also for a technical reason. Is that a tire that is straight up and down has a larger diameter than a tire that is rolled over on its side. So that if you roll over on the side without giving it gas, it slows you down even more and can tip you in too much. So you have to give it more yeah. gas so that the RPM is actually higher. Okay, so I agree with you. Okay, because you're actually making a gearing change when you go to the edge of the tire from the center. Okay, so you would have to you would have to crack the throttle just to maintain that speed. Okay, but that only really would happen, Myron, if you're going at a speed at, at a slow speed, right? So let's just say I'm going in. It, let, let's say I'm going into the 25 mile an hour turn here at 40 miles an hour. When I, when I tip in and go to the smaller diameter part of the tire, that's going to have a slowing effect, right? Uh, of, of almost like a downshift effect. But will it compensate for the 15 mile an hour difference? Probably not, right? So I think that, I think that you know, and I'm not an engineer. I'll just say that right now. I'm not a phys you know, physics or a scientist or anything like that. But, but I'm just saying that we know that you're going to get somewhat of a gearing change when you shift over to the inner diameter of the tire, which is why we would crack the throttle. And I would say that, remember, what I said is that we want to transition from brake to throttle, no matter how you do it. We want to do that at our slowest miles per hour, basically, in the curve. We want to make that transition. So you might say that, let's say I tip in, and I go on to, this, to the edge of the tire, that slows me even more, I need to make that transition there when that happens. And that's because I'm going at a lower speed. So I understand what you're saying. Um, okay. I just think that, what I was trying to say is that if you follow the directions of the course and your entry speed was 25, you still have to give it gas in order to maintain 25. Yeah. Right. Uh, the, now 25 just means tighter turn in this picture. It means- I, I, I know, but- lighter. So I think that, I, I think that you would probably argue, Myron, that if I go into that 25 mile turn, if I go in it, it let's say 45 miles per hour, as I tip in, there's no way I'm rolling on throttle because it's going to, it, it will put me on the wider arc. Would you disagree with that? Oh, I, I agree that's true, but I, I wasn't talking about the high performance riding of going into a corner faster than what's recommended. I'm just saying if that corner is recommended in a basic course at 25 and you follow the instructor's direction at 25, then you have to give it gas in order to maintain 25. That's and all I'm saying. I agree. And, and that's where I said at the beginning, and I don't know if you were here or not at the time, I did say that the, the, the waiver course techniques can bring you very far into the future if you ride ultra conservatively, okay? Or if you ride below um, li below limits, more conservatively, okay? I mean, would you agree with that? Yes, I would agree with that. Good, okay, good. Thanks, thanks for that. Um, for, for bringing that up, appreciate that. And, and you're absolutely right. And it just does reinforce 
sort of what we're talking about here, okay? And again, I'm not trying to discredit the techniques taught in the waiver courses. They're, they're sound for what they are to do. My, my, my point here is that we, we have, I should turn this off. Uh, my point here is that we, uh, we're going to be going faster and, and it may not be appropriate. Thank you.